What? I'm Ranga and welcome to my art space. You know, any places with water or beach or pool are some of my most favorite places on earth. But you know what? Water is one of the hardest subjects to paint. So let's discover together how to paint water. Mornings are the best time to take a dip into the pool. And appreciate the beauty of water while staying here at Casa de Leoncia in Pampanga. Hey, it's a good day to paint today, so let's try and see if we can paint the water at the pool. I tried mixing different hues of blue so I can catch the coolness of the pool. But then I realized there are more details that I needed to add in this painting. So then I ended up with what I can consider as a reference painting. So what I did was that I made a thumbnail of a portion of the swimming pool because I just wanted to see if I can paint water on the spot. Water is a really hard subject to paint so it's not that easy to catch on the uh, light and the shadows of especially of the waves. Right now I'm not going to make a really serious painting of the water because it would surely take time and I want to spend the rest of the time here with my family. I just wanted to catch if I can catch the colors that I want or the, the, the colors for a more serious painting that I will be doing in my most convenient time. So now I'm back home from our family reunion in Casa de Leoncilia in Pampanga and this is where I'll continue the actual painting of the water. The painting that I made last time will be used as a guide, especially the colors that I will be using for the actual painting which will be made on this space below the paper. For the reference image, I tried to choose one among three pictures. The first one is this one with endless ripples. Another one that I've considered was this one with calmer waters. And the final photo that I looked at was this one with the bigger ripples. Instead of one, I opted for two reference photos. The first one is the one with the big ripples, and the second one is the one with the smaller ripples. I chose two because I thought I'd want to see the difference on how the big ripples were made compared to the small ripples. With the use of a washi tape, I added a partition in between the space to make two paintings. I'll be first making the one with the big ripples. There are also shapes to be observed here like the upward curves, little elongated circles in somewhere between these curves. These shapes define where the light and the shadows fall on the water. Catching the basic shapes as based on this reference photo is a good first step in painting water. Then it's time to color block these shapes. I first started with the darker tones. Always use the most dominant color when color blocking a certain shape. For this part, I'm using cobalt blue mixed with a bit of Prussian blue. After covering the dark parts, it's time to color block the lighter portion. I added more white to my mixture of blue to make it lighter. If you would observe, it is these small circles that have the lighter color blue. I suppose these are the parts where the sunlight has been reflecting on. I 
after completing the color block, this is where I added more details and more hues. Somewhere in between these bright pools of blue are wiggly lines that come in the middle of them. Even when painting water, always remember where the light source comes from and where the shadow falls. Usually, the darker part of the picture is actually the part where it is away from the sunlight. To emphasize the brightest parts that reflect the sunlight, I used white. Expect that the white will be tainted with the color that is on the canvas. That's usually the case when I use watercolor or gouache. By the way, I'm using gouache in my paintings. Whenever my white gets tainted, I just add in a little more layer of white. I just add in a little more details in the finishing touches such as adjustments in the hues and also additional light or shadows. And we're done in our first painting. The second painting with the smaller ripples was more complex, so I had to start off with one solid dominant color of blue, which was based on the first painting. This was going to be the base color for the second picture. I later added darker hues on the edges. These lines are actually the tiles beneath the pool. It's okay they're not straight because images beneath the water tend to refract due to the wavy surface. I only put them on the edges because that's only where they were clearly seen. I used white to see the contrast for these tiny ripples. Similar to the shapes in the first painting, I used wavy lines to indicate that these are ripples. The distance between these ripples should become narrower as they come closer to the very source of these tiny waves. I had quite a hard time making tiny details with my paintbrush because it's already full of paint. It really takes a lot of patience to make these tiny details. Adding the darker tones of the water was more painstaking because I had to meticulously put them in the middle of each ripple. And these dark tones became smaller and smaller because the spaces between them became narrower and narrower. I forgot to note how long it took me to make each painting, but maybe it's safe to say not less than 30 minutes for each one. Even though we think water is a massless thing, it can actually create simple shapes that you can transfer to your paper or to your canvas while you're observing how they are being drawn. One of the techniques of painting water is finding these basic shapes such as like the uh, small wavy mountain and also like the light circles that are falling in between these mountains and then also observing where the light and the shadow falls and combine them together to make a picture of the water. It can take practice to paint water. I know it's a tricky thing. Even I find it a really tricky subject to paint, but it's fun to make one. If you enjoyed this video and you learned something from it, I hope you would leave a comment and let me know your thoughts about painting water. And if you like this video, do click the thumbs up button. And if you're here in my channel for the first time, do subscribe. And also click the bell notification so that you'll be notified of my future videos.
I would also like to thank John of Many Tribes One Kingdom for this wonderful t-shirt. I hope you can check out their channel on YouTube too. Again, I'm Rama and thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you again in my next art space. Bye! Sound check. Sound check. <laughs> the dog is noisy. <laughs> A painting of water is that 